received a life sentence and aggravated crime against nature, you received a 15 year sentence and those sentences I believe are running concurrently. Is that your understanding, sir? Yes, ma'am. Okay, your case this afternoon has been assigned to Mr. Wise. He'll start the interview process with you. You know, Mr. Frazier, I went over your case several times, but one of the things I wanted to ask you, was there alcohol, drugs, or anything involved in a lot of this? Just alcohol. Well, every time you, this went on for a long time. Yeah. From the time a child was young, uh, yeah. I think nine years old to 14 years old. Yes, sir. Was you drinking every time this went on? Well, no, sir. Not every time. I was having problems with the marriage. She was too young to understand. I was having problems with my marriage, and I never repeated to her what what was causing this. And it was more out of jealousy and, and just trying to get even, just looking for a way out. I was more retarded than half retarded than anything during the time that all this is taking place. I have to admit that I needed this to get educated, get more mature, to realize that I went the wrong way and I always could have ended my marriage before that happened. But at the time, I just didn't see no way out. And at the time, I was uh, I, I was being threatened, threatened by my wife. But she's gonna sue me for this. She's gonna sue me for that. I just didn't see no way out. You know, being a way out is one thing, but running a child's life is another. Yes, I I do I do agree, and I'm so sorry that. I cannot turn that back. I wish to God. I understand that. But uh, what, about sex that? what about sex offender treatment programs? You went to all four phases? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sex offender yes. treatment. Yes, sir. Okay. I had. Yeah, I will uh, go out there in the world, too, if they want me to. I do anything that the DA... Whatever they require for me, I will do it. Just to, I mean, I'm all mature now. I got my GED. When I come in here, I was almost borderline retarded because I couldn't read, write, or spell. I had a mind of a maybe a, a second grader or a third grader. I got to where I could be with more people, more I ran a lot of ground up, more people with positive accent you know a positive uh way of looking at life and it really made me grow really made me mature okay uh during this during this time uh how were you during the time of all this i was 34. you was 34 she was eight years old she was well, that's not what they were saying, but I think she was might have been a little older than that. Well, I'm going with what what it says here in the court record. Yeah, yeah, I understand, but uh, yeah, okay. You know, she, Where's, Ms. Fraser, uh, where is your family at and everything? Where do they live? My my mother lived in Ragley at the time. In Ragley. Ragley, Louisiana. But where is where is that compared to where the victim lives? That was about fifteen miles away from or maybe ten, twelve miles away from where we live. Right. That's my mother now. Uh, I don't have any questions. Thank you, Mr. Wise. Mr. Roche has a question. Yes. Uh that's yes, news. Martin, Martin here. Can you verify the sex offender treatment? Tell me when and where. Yeah, he. I love to go. So, sex 
six so six and three was eight fourteen two thousand two. We're having trouble hearing you, Warren Lamartin. Here, according to the paperwork we have here, it was done in 2002. 2002. Yes, all four phases. Uh, Mr. Reginald's looking now for me. Checking on. Yes, sir, all four phases, and it was uh, completed August 2002. Thank you, Warren. Thank you, uh, Mr. Roche. Um, Mr. Frazier, yes, you indicated when you were speaking to Mr. Wise that when you got to prison, you believe you were, um, your intellect was about at the second grade level. Is that what you said? More like my IQ, yes, yes ma'am, I would say. Yeah, that. that. And so what I want to ask you is, and we've already established, and it's, it's in the record, that um, the uh, sexual abuse against the victim, your daughter, she was seven or eight years old, and it went on for a period of seven or eight years. Would you... Yeah. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And did you know uh, over that seven or eight year period that what you were doing was inappropriate, wrong, and criminal? Well, yes, I, yes, but I didn't know that it was carried that much time, and I did not know that she that she would would talk. I'll be honest with you, I didn't think she would tell. Okay. I don't have any other questions. Uh, Ms. Roden, can we hear from, uh, does anybody give any, okay, yes, we do have a guest that's going to speak. Can we hear from Ms. Sheila Digon, uh, the victim's aunt, who would like to speak in opposition? Hello? Yes, ma'am. You can make your statement now, please. Yes, my name is Sheila Digon. And I am uh, op opposing him getting out. When his daughter got this letter in the mail from y'all, I have been there with her the whole time that she's been going through this, and it has upset her terribly bad. She doesn't want to have to worry about anything happening to her if he gets out, or she doesn't want to worry about if it's something that happened to another little baby girl child when if he gets out she's scared to death of that i mean she has been so upset with this that she's missed work and everything i mean she's had she's had medical issues her she's had horrible ear rates because she's just she, she, it's just traumatized her hearing that he can have a chance of getting out So I just, all, I, I'm only speaking on her behalf on, on what I've seen. I've been with her and what I've seen, I'm, I'm speaking on her behalf on that. Well, yeah, we appreciate she's just scared it. to death. We appreciate it. And we do have a, a letter for your information and for her information. We do have the, uh, the letter or email that she wrote. It's in the record in which she explains. Oh, the great. Good. Thank yes, you so much. Did. Now, my sister Amanda has been called. I don't know if y'all allowed her in. I did call her after I got in to let her know that y'all were having the hearing now. And she's tried logging in. She says all she's hearing is music. Ms. Roten. So, but Amanda, uh, not Amanda, Marjorie Alexander has been trying to log into the meeting. Uh, yes, ma'am. We have tried to speak for her. Vanessa. We tried contacting her. Uh, Miss, Miss Sheila, and we were not able to get in touch with her. I'm not sure what's going on. We, we can try again. Okay, well, we're going to go ahead and proceed and ask Mr. Frazier if there's anything he'd like to say before we reach a decision. Well, yes, there he is. You know. All right, thank you much. Go ahead, Mr. Uh, Frazier. Yes, there he is. I would never harm nobody. 
ever again in my life. And I I do not want them to ever be afraid that that that, that would happen. Because I promise you, and I promise everybody that I can't take back what I've done, but I will never harm nobody in life again. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I think the uh, board is prepared to vote, Mr. Watts. At this time, I'm going to be voting to deny. Uh, yes, strong law enforcement opposition and very strong, adamant victims opposition against your release. Also, I was reading in one of your statements there, it said where you said you never had an alcohol problem. Then you told me just a while ago you had a problem with uh, drinking or something. So uh, you need to get that addressed in the right situation. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Weiss. Mr. Roche? Uh, Madam Chairman, Mr. Frazier, my vote is the same for the same reason. Thank you, Mr. Roche. Mr. Mandel. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Mr. Frazier, uh, I, I, I've listened to you talk with us, and, and I accept the fact that you may have not been well educated, that uh, there may be some issues going along with you. Uh, but you know, before you came to prison, while all of this was going on, you were a truck driver, you held a job, you did things. Uh, you seem to be making excuses for what you did. It doesn't sound to me that you're really owning up to what you did. Well, yes, uh, sir. Your comments, your comments a few moments ago disturbed me. I mean, instead of saying, oh my God, I'm so sorry what I did to my daughter, you said, you know, I didn't realize it carried that much time. And I didn't realize she would say anything. Those comments disturbed me tremendously, especially since you've taken all of our sex offender programs. That's the best you come up with. That concerns me deeply. I vote the same as my colleagues to deny your point. And your part. Mr. Frazier, I do agree. Uh, you have law enforcement opposition, uh, the age of the victim at the time, and the duration, the length of time that this occurred. And it doesn't seem to me that you've taken responsibility for the harm you've caused. My vote today is to deny your application for clemency. So you've received a unanimous vote, four votes to deny your application, sir. So that's the outcome of today's proceeding. Honestly, honestly, I didn't know it would carry so much time, and I didn't know that she would talk. That's what he tells the parole board. You can't make it up. And it's like, is he speaking the truth? Is does he actually have a low IQ? Is he trying to manipulate the board to sh show to them, look, see, I, I, I still have a low IQ. I can't be held responsible. I've just seen so many of these roaches manipulate and manipulate. Like Miss Renata said with the mic, even she was so disgusted. Which the, when he answered that, she's just like, I have no more questions. You held a job. You drove a truck. You paid your bills. You were married. You're, you're going to tell me that you're going to do this to your daughter for seven years? And what's the reasons he starts off with? I, I was going through a divorce. I was having problems with my marriage. Jealousy. What are you saying? What are you saying? It, 
it's just when you think you've seen it all, people need to see this. For those who are lobbying and advocating for for these monsters, they need to see it. They need to understand that monsters exist, that roaches are real, that they need to be locked up forever. What's interesting about the sentencing is that the official sentencing is aggravated sexual assault and also the, uh, which gave him the life sentence and then crime against nature. And thank you, Richard, for dropping in these notes, which gave him just 20 years. And even till today in the legislation, uh, crime against nature is is incest, so they've changed what they call it, in my understanding. But even today, in Louisiana legislation, you can do aggravated incest on your own child, and the maximum you can get is 20 years. The same thing for the crime against nature. You know, this is the laws that are written And it makes no sense. And you'll say, make it make sense. How is that possible? But it's true. It's the law. And the prosecutor in this case, the judge, at least they, you know, said, no, 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 we don't want to lock him up just for 20 years. We'll get him on. We'll get him on the crime against nature for 20 years. But we'll also get him on the sexual assault and give him life. And frankly, I don't understand why they why they don't do take this approach more often because they don't. We have seen so many incest charges where they only get the maximum 20, 20 years. And it's just proof that when a judge wants to, they can. But it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make any sense. It was interesting listening to Jim Wise talk without having his microphone break up, right? There in person. I think everyone was just simply disgusted. And I'd just say, thankfully, we didn't have to listen to anyone talk in support. That would have been unbearable. And this kind of a rule of thumb, it's sad when someone shows up, and I think that's a crucifix. It's uh, on his, around his neck. It's it's sadly it's sadly like a, a an indicator where it's like oh no this is gonna be a bad hearing. They didn't mention his risk score. Wonder if it's low, huh? Probably is low risk score. I wish they would have mentioned it. At least they gave him life. At least hopefully he will die in prison. But the idea that he can even ask for commutation, and you listen to what's happening to his daughter, the victim, you hear it through his niece, how it just changed her life, how all of a sudden she's, her whole life is like falling apart and that he should have the right to do that. It, because he took some sex offender programs. Uh, you know, th there needs to be better guardrails in place that would allow someone to come up for a commutation hearing. There really has to be. You know, their rights, why is an inmate's life, why is a prisoner's rights greater than that of his daughter victim and and these are things that they consider these are things that they talk about and pass in the laws you know it's right here let's go over it and it, this is this is their their website louisiana's website for what what you can do to apply for a commutation hearing and this is under an incarcerated offender who is serving a life sentence which he was but who is serving a sentence for a violent offense as defined in RS 
B, or a sex offense, as defined in RS, may request a commutation of sentence after serving a minimum of 10 years. And, 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 and really, I just say, what? It's just 10 years? A judge gave this monster a life sentence. A jury found the person guilty. Whatever it is, they have a life sentence. And after 10 years, they have the right to ask for a commutation of sentence. They have the right to put the victim, the survivor, through that, through all of that, when they're, they might just be on the verge of getting their life a little bit on on track and they have to be put through a commutation hearing. They must have a disciplinary free report for a period of at least 24 months. That's it, two years. I mean, can you write these laws any more lenient? That means a person can have an aggravated sex offense in prison two years ago. And hey, what the heck? Must not be classified to maximum custody status. Wow, that's real. That's real, uh, real tough you guys have here. Can't be in maximum security. Must possess a marketable job skill either through previous employment history or through successful completion of vocational training while incarcerated or upon written recommendation from trial officials. An offender sentenced to life may only apply after he has served 15 years from the date of the sentence, unless he has sufficient evidence which has caused him to have been found not guilty. So, I don't know. Oh, he's not serving a life sentence. That's where I was wrong. So, okay. So, I was wrong. It's 15 years when given a life sentence. It's. I thought maybe, okay, I made a fool of myself, but no, it's 15 years. And come on. You know, it's the same. I have the same argument. The pardon board utilizes two-stage process for commutation review. The first stage is qualification. During this stage, the one qualification review, the pardon board will conduct a review to determine if the applicant has merit and should be passed to stage two, commutation hearing. For further investigation and consideration for sentence commutation in stage one, the applicant does not appear before the board during its review application. So, I mean, I simply ask you this question, and that is, we saw his hearing. We saw how he answered the questions. How is it possible that he went through the review process and got approved? Because he could have gone through the review process and they could have asked him the questions and he would have, you assume, answered the same way and they should have just denied him based on that and not put his daughter through the stress that they put her through. And the system is probably designed to catch them and stop them in its tracks, but it doesn't seem that that happened in this case. Either that or he somehow shockingly had a better interview which I don't believe. So, and that's stage one, right? He's not even supposed to, it's not even meeting the board. It's just that process. Stage two, during the process, the victims and our victim representatives, the juices. So this is stage two that we just saw. Um, Yep. Um, <clears throat> it's a shame. It's a broken system, and uh, you probably wouldn't believe it if you didn't see it. But that's why we do this so that you can. And with that, I'll let you go.